car 34 of Robert Dahlgren makes another journey through the pit lane. OK, restart time. Puts it in the hands of Shane Van Gisbergen in the acceleration zone. Look at them all spread out. They go in search of their own piece of real estate. They bump and grind and push and shove. And now they've got to come all back together again. Oh! One, two, one. Jason Bright over and over and up and into the wall. That started with Slade right, down the inside. Yep, I'm trying to just uh, give us a radio call if you're there, Brody. Huge damage to car 16 of Scott Pye again. Yep. Check, please. You got me. Chaz Mostert. Team Cairo, Adele White, Wally Story in the foreground, engineer. Andrew Edwards, Jason's engineer is frantically trying to make radio contact. And damage to Lee Holdsworth, the front left, that's going to wobble its way around the circuit for car four. So, and look on the inside of the cabin. Oh, gee, that's huge. Just got to go steady now because he easily runs straight to the fence here. And he had, was already carrying damage to the front left-hand corner of that car, and they were asking him to just take it easy. So Tanda's got damage in the front right-hand corner there. Well, that come from that's how it started there, yeah, because Slade was down the inside. That's how it started. So Slade was down the inside with Tanda and Courtney, three abreast, team cars. Van Gisbergen's come in, by the way. He's out of the car. Jason Bright, okay. Scott Pye's out of the car as well. Fantastic. So this was the race leader. And this is going to be a significant delay to get that car cleared. But Bridey was involved in a pretty big crash at the Bathurst 12 hour that he wound up in hospital for. He was checked out and OK. So that's two enormous shunts in the space of just a few weeks. Good looks in the three, down turns one, two, three, mate. Good looks in the the hard thing when you're upside down in the belt is actually to be able to safely manoeuvre yourself out of the car. When um, electronics in the car after a prescribed period don't sense any action from the crank trigger, the electronics in the car shut down. Here's the replay. This will give us some explanations. We'll try to come in together so it's Tim Slade leans on the Holden Racing Team car, which just sends Team BOC Commodore flipping into the air. This was what happened. They all fanned out and then they all came back in and it was never going to work. Van Gisbergen and Kelly get through and then watch car 47 just pushes across and it doesn't take much for Garth Tander just to lean on the front left-hand side of Jason Bright. Oof. It's that secondary impact that's the worry there with the wall, and it got right up on the top of the debris fence. This is Lee Holdsworth's view. Oh, that was the big crunch of the heat. So, OK, so he got hit by Scott Pye and a few others. The contact actually started with the two Red Bull cars. They actually made contact on the way in there also. There's Slade down the inside. He makes contact with Tanda. Tanda makes contact with Bright. Totally out on the slide. Full opposite lock, so he's trying to steer it down. So Jason's trying to make sure it doesn't turn onto its roof. It then catches the curb, and the curb then trips it over. So as it gets to that point there, it was always going to turn over. Yeah. Must have picked up the front right wheel of Tander's car in order to be able to do that launch and Tander's in the pit lane and has been there for a while now as well so it'd be pretty fair old damage on that. It's this next whack with the wall. All this stuff looks spectacular but at that stage you know, it's not a crazy amount of damage. It's this next one where it hits the concrete wall. It is tyre protected and then gets into the debris fence where they're going to have a big nightmare trying to resolve getting this car back in shape. Well, fortunately where the, where the massive load has actually taken place in terms of the final part of the crash, Neil. It was actually against the tyres there. That's taken some load away from that. And that's a tonne and, and a half. Yeah. That's a tonne and a half in the air there. It's just been tossed around like a toy car. 
Well, I'm in the garage with Brad Jones, and Brad, no team is more of a family than yours, and just collectively, your hearts were in mouths there for a few minutes. Ah, uh, yeah, you know, it's just, you know, we really wanted to come out of this this weekend with a good spot. You know, I felt Jason in the BOC car was one of the fastest uh, cars on the track at the time, and, and you know, to see that... That happened is very difficult, but he got out of the car and he's okay. And uh, so, you know, you live to fight another day, but it's, a, you know, it's difficult to watch and, and it'll certainly be an expensive repair. Brad, as you look at that, I mean, the, the car couldn't be in better hands with Bridie. He, he fought it as, as well as he could. I don't think you have a lot of control over them when they're flying through the air like that, Barrett. You can steer it as hard as you want and dab the brake, but, you know, anyone could roll a car over here. That could happen to anyone. But the good news is he's got out of the car. He's fine. The, you know, the cars are built to a, a very high standard of safety, and um, the car's done its job, and it's just unfortunate that um, we're going to leave here and we have to be on the back foot in the championship with that team because I, I really felt they had a good chance this year. Good on you, Brad. Thanks, mate. Thank you.